Welcome back. I get quite a few questions concerning scope selection. And I recognized this years ago when I started my series and I did a video uh, regarding how to select a scope in a confusing market and how to basically boil down the vast selection of scopes to a very, very discernible number that you can pick according to your own finances and your own per personal preferences. Uh, and, you know, I talked about uh, pricing, objective lens size, scope tube diameters, radical designs, uh, ranging devices, and magnification, uh, all these different issues I, I spoke about. And then in a later video, I spoke about objective lens, uh, you know, adjustments, side focus, and I spoke about first and second focal plane and so forth. But I want to address the issue which I think has become uh, less important to most shooters, uh, and that has to do with field of view. Field of view is something which is the obverse side of the coin, which is the power, the magnification of a scope. When you look at a uh, specification uh, chart for a given scope, it'll start out at, at one side, it'll have the magnification ranges, in other words, it'll start out from the, the lowest magnification range, and as you move down the chart, it'll move up to the highest magnification range within that model, and then as you move over to the, the far side of the page, on the right side of the page, it'll list the price of the scope. And it's only natural, everybody who's buying a product tends to, you know, adjust their, adjust their purchase according to what is, what is in their wallet, what they can afford. So they'll move down, it's natural to move down the, down the chart as far as you can to get the most scope for your money, the biggest bang for your buck, you might say. And unfortunately, that's the wrong approach when it comes to selecting a scope. Because as I said in the first video years ago, less is more. It's not more is better, it's less is more. Now, that does not necessarily mean the, you know, the uh, quality of a scope. You can, get, you can get a very high quality scope. I'm speaking about the uh, power range, the magnification range of a scope. And I said in that video that, you know, you don't, you should not ever buy a scope according to its high power setting. You should always purchase a scope according to its lowest power setting and adjust that to your particular needs. Now understand that I don't have uh, I don't have a website here where I'm selling anything in the back door. I'm not I'm not trying to promote a particular product so that you turn around and go back to my website and buy something. I'm not I'm not a person who's you know selling a product on a product page. I'm only here to help guide you so that you can make an intelligent selection on purchasing a scope that will give you the the best fun a field and also it will give you the best bang for your buck. Um, if, you, if, you, if you look at a, a specification uh, page, and as I say, it lists all the, the magnifications on the left-hand column. As you move over to the right-hand column, it'll list all the prices. In the, in the middle, it'll list you know, the uh, eye relief. It'll list the uh, objective lens size, the scope length, and all that stuff. But the one column that many people will simply fail to observe is the so-called FOV, field of view. That's the one that's the most important of all. That, that by far, that is the most important and it's the least understood. Um, my experience with scopes is wide ranging. I, I have I've done all sorts of shooting with scopes, long range shooting, short range shooting, uh, moving target shooting, game shooting, uh, plinking with it, bench press shooting with them, long range shooting at bottles, you name it, I've done it. So I don't have any particular specialized interest in scopes. But what I do have is a clear understanding about what scope magnification does uh, and what it's expected to do and what it should not be expected to do. And it should not be expected that a high power scope will necessarily give you uh, better shooting ability because it doesn't work out that way. That's the perception that the marketing industry wants to give you is that the higher power of the scope, the better you're going to be able to hit your target. Well, let's show you a, let's show you a, a, a classic uh, extreme example of why this isn't so. This particular, this particular target right here, this is my, this is my wife's sighting in of her uh, 243 Ruger American and it's a, a little short carbine I'll show you in a second. Now 
We know how this we know how this rifle shoots. This rifle shoots superbly with many different bullet weights. So it was sighted in previously for a lighter bullet weight, which was uh, shooting at this this particular shot was the first shot that it fired with the hundred grain bullet. So we immediately adjusted it one inch up and a half inch over, and it put the these four shots into one small group. And you can see that it's, it you know the, each of those squares is one inch. So that group size center to center is barely over three eighths of an inch, four shots. Now that that particular bullseye right here from one side to the other, this is exactly a six inch bull. That's all that that's all that she had to uh, shoot at a hundred yards from the bench was at a hundred yards was a six inch bullseye. You can do you can do the math and you can you can readily see that if you can sh if you can shoot a you know three eighths of an inch group at a six inch bullseye you're not going to have much trouble hitting a deer at 400 or 350 yards with a you know a 16 or 18 inch brisket that's not going to be a problem at all so what scope was that that she was using well it's not it's not the scope that anybody i guarantee you that there's a lot of people out there snickering right now because this is not the classic scope that you're going to see when you go into a, you know, when you go in, up to the counter these days, you're going to see scopes with huge objective lenses and they're going to have, they're going to have numbers written around the sides and everything and the big, big turrets and all that stuff. So this is not in that, this is not in that configuration. You know, this has got, this is set up right now. It's got a, uh, it's, it's got weather caps on it because, uh, you know, we've, we've had some severe weather here in the last uh, week or so deer hunting. And, you know, it's got, it's got these caps to keep the snow off it. But this is the, this is the only scope that I would ever recommend for woodland hunting. If you have to, if you have to put a scope on a rifle for woodland hunting, that's the only scope that I could ever possibly recommend. I couldn't even possibly recommend a two to seven power scope for woodland hunting. Now, why I say that? Because the numbers are very simple and, you know, numbers don't lie. That particular scope at 100 yards, this is according to Leupold's own chart. Now, remember that the numbers are pretty consistent across all the different manufacturers. A given power will pretty much yield the same field of view no matter who you're buying from. You know, give or take a couple of feet here and there, which really amounts to nothing. But a one and a half, that's a one and a half to five power scope. I'm only going to cite the lowest, I'm only going to cite the field of view from the lowest power factor because that's the only one that matters. When you go in the woods, you don't want to turn it up at all. You just leave it, you leave it at the lowest power setting. The numbers that they give are 74.2 feet of field of view at 100 yards. Now that sounds pretty impressive, but the problem is is that when you go in the woods, you never see 100 yards. You're not even gonna find a place where you can shoot down a logging road at 100 yards in New England. Um, so that's a moot point. Divide that by four. Now, you know, image from a scope subtends at a constant. So at 25 yards, you're going to have exactly one-fourth of the field of view that you had at 100 yards. That's the way that worked. That's a math mathematical fact. So at 25 yards, now you're down to 18.75 feet. Now 18.75 feet is not very much. That's about the length of a decent-sized pickup truck, and that's about all you're going to get. If that's, a, if that's a moving deer, that's not an awful generous amount of field of view for you to pick up your scope and find that deer before he vanishes into the into the woods. Um, the more the more popular the more popular scope tends to be a three to nine power scope. A three to nine power scope reduces that by ten feet. In other words, at twenty five yards, if you can see twenty five yards, you're down to eight point four feet of field of view. That's all you have. Eight point four feet. That's a very, very small amount. That's less than the width of an average nine-foot garage door. My friends, if you, if you have a moving deer, and deer don't move when they've been startled, they don't move slowly. If you, if you pick up your rifle and you're searching through the woods to find a nine-foot, uh, an 8.4-foot field of view at 25 yards, you're lost. More, 
typically you're going to see him in a woodland setting you're going to see him at 15 yards under those circumstances now you're down to 4.9 feet you're down to five foot field of view that's with a three to nine power scope not only that but a three to nine power scope doesn't focus very well at close range you get inside 20 yards and you start to get pretty fuzzy images so that everything that you everything that you see clearly at 100 yards now becomes a fuzzy image at 15 or 20 yards and that that makes that makes finding a game all the more difficult so a lot of people will say well what what about a two to seven power scope a two to seven power scope was the one that i used in the video recently shooting well this last summer shooting my 257 roberts where i was drilling three eighths of an inch groups at 100 yards that particular scope actually cuts the that loss of a half a power going going from one and a half to two power in other words gaining that gaining that extra half a power has uh, cost me uh, 30 yards of field of view i've gone from 74 feet down to 43.8 feet at 100 yards that drops down 25 yards down to down to 18.45 feet and less than uh, less than 11 feet at 15 yards very very small field of view at 15 yards so you know even though a two to seven might possibly be a good all-purpose scope as i said in the first video if you're a person who's buying a scope for you know combined use for prairie shooting and for woodland hunting you can probably get by if you're willing to sacrifice some of those very close range shots or if you have a little bit more open woodland shooting a two to seven is probably not a bad compromise but i would always go to the one and a half to five if i was clearly buying a woodland hunting scope would that restrict me if i was taking that rifle out in the prairie and shooting at you know a mule deer at 275 yards it certainly wouldn't not in the least that remember was shooting at a six inch bullseye at 100 yards you know a, a, a mule deer that has a brisket of 14 to 16 inches at 275 yards that's a, that's a piece of cake there's no problem there whatsoever you know positioning it's the positioning of the reticle relative to the target that's important it's not the size of the reticle to the target that's important it's always the positioning as long as you can see a game and you can see a reticle you bisect it and you fire and that's all there is to it I'm here to tell you the truth, friends. I don't want you to get the idea that just because the guy on the other side of the counter, all he wants to sell you is a you know four four and a half to fourteen power scope that's that long with a big fifty millimeter objective lens, that that's the way to go because it's clearly not. He wants to sell you that because first of all, he doesn't have anything else to sell. The last big box store I went into, they didn't even have, they didn't even have anything down to. Uh, less than three to nine power that's that's the smallest scope they had and they basically they blew me off because i was even looking at a scope i i wanted to see a scope that they didn't have i wanted to see a one and a half they didn't even have one and a half to five so buy intelligently friends don't buy according to what the market wants to sell you buy according to what the best scope is for your needs and you're going to save a lot of money in the process you're going to have you're going to have a scope that's going to serve you very well you're going to get a lot of laughs from people who uh, will they'll snicker at the scope that you have because it doesn't look impressive and it doesn't have all the bells and whistles remember it's not more is better it's less is more thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and god bless